Solar Impulse uh, popped into our world quite unexpectedly and uh, with quite demanding uh, attitude uh, from many aspects. But let's concentrate on, on what actually our company, Air Navigation Service Provision, was challenged with uh, when Solar Impulse uh, kicked in. So the overall ATM system and uh, provision of air navigation services were mostly concentrated on two major customers, that being commercial aviation and uh, uh, especially in Switzerland provision of uh, uh, support and services to Air Force. Now all these uh, uh, flying objects have certain, uh, uh, certain attributes and certain performance characteristics which Solar Impulse definitely does not fit in. So accommodating actually pioneering effort as Solar Impulse is uh, uh, an aircraft that is light as a feather, that flies uh, 20, 30 knots, that can climb to the uh, uh, levels where uh, commercial jet aircraft are also uh, uh, flying is quite a challenge in order to first and foremost uh, ensure the safety of general public both on ground and public flying up there in the air but also to ensure the safety of, uh, of the pilot of Solar Impulse and Solar Impulse as a bird itself. So what we have been faced with was something that uh, never happened before. Uh, we have seen balloons flying around the world, we have seen many things, but we didn't see a solar aircraft actually. Uh, a bird that wanted to fly with big birds, fast birds, heavy birds, and it's a bird of a feather. It's uh, very fragile very sensitive to wake turbulence encounter to the measure that is uh, uh, really comparable to, to, to nothing that we know that flies. To just illustrate the, the, the constraints that Solar Impulse puts uh, on, on air, uh, air traffic management and air navigation system is uh, the fact that uh, when it lands to Geneva or anywhere else we needed to close that airport 30 minutes before and. Uh, dozen of minutes after. We needed to actually calm the atmosphere so that Solar Impulse would be flying through, through as, as uninterrupted environment as possible. So we, as, uh, as being at the source of Solar Impulse in Switzerland, we were faced with something that no one else ever did and uh, uh, Skyguide as ATS authority and FOCA as a regulator. Skyguide at the same time ATS authority but also air navigation service provider. Uh, needed to find a way to accommodate Solar Impulse, to accommodate uh, its ambition, uh, so to accommodate actually its presence, its uh, uh, presence status, uh, its ambition to go around the world, to fly first uh, uh, over Switzerland, to fly uh, within European boundaries and then to, to, to circumnavigate the globe. Uh, and all that in, uh, in a fashion that uh, will integrate that bird into existing air traffic management system. Uh, not an easy task, quite a bit of complexity there and quite a bit of time pressure because we have been faced with that challenge with literally speaking like three or four weeks before Solar Impulse was intending to fly outside of segregated areas and uh, across Europe. Uh, a very small team was uh, then uh, established, working literally three weeks every day, including weekends, and we worked very closely together and very constructively together. We had several meetings with the core team of uh, Solar Impulse uh, in order to, first of all, understand the performance, because we had a technical paper, but we needed to talk to pilot, we needed to talk uh, to all the team there in order to understand really the challenges, uh, also their plans, their ambitions. Only then you can actually step into developing the regulation that will support such a flight. So we've been developing that uh, regulation with the, with the goal and having in mind not only uh, not only Swiss environment, but the, the ambition of the solar impulse to fly around the globe and at that moment to fly within Europe. And we produced a set of rules uh, together with FOCA, a set of rules that was sort of more than a guideline, but a book of rules for handling solar impulse within the air navigation service provision. 
and uh, in addition we provided also and produced for our uh, units directly affected, we produce service orders, we produce procedures to enable them to manage to handle that, that bird adequately in a most in a safe and, and efficient manner. Procedures are nothing else but the, the, the top of the iceberg. Uh, it's, it's the final product that uh, comes out after all the environment, all the performance of the craft in question, uh, all the systems involved, all the controllers and support staff uh, uh, adjacent are understood, their limitations, their ambitions, their goals are fully understood and only then you can provide and actually produce adequate regulation. So I hope we did a good job there because it's already for three years that I've heard nothing and no one complained about it, so it looks like, uh, like it works well. Uh, I would like to wish uh, to André and Bertrand a uh, safe trip. I wish them to succeed in what they started with because many people didn't understand what they wanted to achieve. Uh, some people thought it's impossible, but uh, they're moving, they're pushing the envelope and that is what aviation is all about. Skyguide uh, took a pain to, to support this effort and we always will because we see the interest of aviation in progress and we need to push the envelope if we want to sustain. So I wish them luck and I hope that uh, the book of rules that uh, we together with FOCA created will help them to safely navigate around the globe.